You know, in labs and hospitals all around the world, there are just mountains of raw data, patient charts, genetic sequences, clinical trial results, and hidden inside all that data are the answers to some really life-or-death questions. Today, we're going to explore how biostatistics and the Python programming language team up to find those answers. And that's really the central question, isn't it? How do we take this chaotic jumble of numbers from, say, a clinical trial and actually turn it into a discovery that could save lives? Well, that's the whole mission of biostatistics. So we're going to approach this like we're detectives. The data holds all the clues, Python is basically our magnifying glass, and our goal is to uncover the truth. So let's get this investigation started. Every good investigation starts with gathering and preparing the evidence, right? And in biostatistics, this means we have to confront the often messy reality of biological data before we can even think about drawing any conclusions. Before we do any kind of analysis, we have got to clean up our evidence. First, we use Python to load the data. Then, we have to hunt for missing values. They're often called NANs, or not a number. I mean, just imagine a patient's weight is missing from a file. If we don't handle that one little thing correctly, it could crash our entire analysis or even worse, totally skew our results. We also make sure the data is in the right format. And finally, we create some initial charts just to get a first look at the data's landscape. It's not the glamorous part for sure, but trust me, it's the foundation for absolutely everything that follows. Okay, so our evidence is now clean and organized. We can finally move to the next phase, interrogation. It's time to start asking the data some really pointed questions and test the hypotheses that kicked off our investigation in the first place. And this interrogation, it's a structured process. We don't just guess. We have to use the right tool for the job. For example, if our question is, hey, does this new drug lower blood pressure more than a placebo? Well, we're comparing averages, so we'd use a t-test. But if we're asking, did more patients in the treatment group recover than in the control group, we're comparing categories, which calls for a chi-square test. See? There's a logical tool for every single question. Now here is a crucial, crucial warning for every data detective out there. Something called a p-value might tell you a finding is statistically significant, but that does not mean it's medically significant. That's where effect size comes in. It tells you how much of a difference there is. A new drug might lower blood pressure by a statistically significant 0.1%, but that's such a tiny effect that it won't make any real difference to a patient's health. And that distinction, well, it's critical. So we've tested our assumptions about what happened in the past. Now let's see how we can use what we've learned to actually predict the future. This is where we start building predictive models. A classic tool for this is linear regression. It's perfect when we want to predict a specific number on a continuous scale. For instance, can we predict a patient's future cholesterol level based on their current age, weight, and diet? Linear regression is the model that helps us find the relationship between those factors and make that prediction. But, you know, so many critical questions in medicine aren't numbers. They're yes or no answers. For those, we use something different. Logistic regression. This helps us predict the probability of an outcome, like will this patient respond to treatment or is this tumor malignant or benign? You know, building a model is one thing, but a good detective always validates their theories. We have to test it. We use metrics like R-squared to see how well our predictions are actually matching the real data. For those yes or no predictions, a confusion matrix helps us see exactly how many times we were right and, maybe more importantly, how many times we were wrong. Visualizing our predictions against reality is always the final check. A lot of times, our investigation needs to zoom out. A single data set can give us some great clues, but the strongest evidence, that comes from looking at the entire landscape of research. And this means understanding and combining the results of multiple clinical studies. This is the incredible power of what's called a meta-analysis. Just imagine each of these small bars is a separate study on a new drug. Maybe one study had 50 patients, another had 70. The results are interesting, sure, but not definitive. By statistically combining them, we get the power of a single, massive study, that's the large bar, which gives us a much more confident and reliable conclusion. All right, so we've cleaned the evidence, we've interrogated with tests, we've built models to predict the future, and we've combined findings from multiple sources. Let's bring this whole investigation to its final and most important step, the conclusion. 
because this is what it all comes down to. The code, the tests, the models, they are not just academic exercises. They are the tools that allow us to move from uncertainty to confidence, creating conclusions that doctors can actually trust and that can genuinely improve patient outcomes. And hey, if you're inspired to become a data detective yourself, the Dallas Data Science Academy Bootcamp is actually built to teach this entire process. It covers everything we've just talked about, from wrestling with messy data, all the way to building predictive models, and it's all done through hands-on projects guided by experts. So as we wrap this up, I'll just leave you with this one thought. The world is full of biological data that's just holding the answers to some really urgent questions. With these tools and this framework, the only question left is, what biological mystery will you solve next? <laughs>